Well, Vince, welcome to my little video project I'm calling <laughs> Discipleship Video Online. So, Vince, uh, um, I heard uh, so, so, some pretty good stories, but I want you to share something that you would feel comfortable sharing with somebody, anybody, that uh, God has touched your life. I can do that. Yeah. Um, I was saved. Uh, or the Lord come into my life. I recognized the Lord coming into my life um, in my 30th year. I was 29 years old. It was around July. But prior to that, um, I got, well, I can't say I got a scare because it, I guess it really never scared me. But um, I was coming up out of Illinois. I worked for a company called... Um, Mill Bank Systems, and what they did was they made powder paint systems for the indus different industries. So we run around. I was an electrician for Mill Bank Systems, and we run around the countryside after we make the system in the house, and we go out and install it in whatever factory that they had sold it to. And we did a job down in Miriam or. It wasn't Miriam, Illinois, but that we, that was the town next to it. Um, we were we were staying at a hotel in Miriam, Illinois. Um, I was doing my my general drinking at the time, um, and and anyway, bottom line was we had been partying the night before and um, into the wee hours of the morning. And we knew we were Sunday. Sunday, we knew we were headed up out of Illinois. We we had to be at work Monday morning in St. Louis at another job, and um, so we were. This was in the winter time, and we were headed up out of Marion, Illinois, Sunday night uh, to get there and um, and start work Monday morning. So around, it was around midnight. We're about uh, 50, 60 miles north of Miriam and about 11 miles closest to the closest town. I was driving an 87 Bronco 2 at the time. And, um, and I hadn't, we were, we, it was snowing and sleeting and for whatever reason, I never bothered to lock it in four wheel drive. So we're just going to wheel drive up the highway. And um, as we're going along, all of a sudden, the rear end of the Bronco 2 decides to catch up and pass the front end of the Bronco 2. <laughs> so now we're doing about 55 miles an hour up the highway backwards. And, um, and, and uh, at the time, the song Take the Long Rate Way Home by Supertramp is playing. And it's a, it's funny the things you remember. And as you I don't know if you know this or not, but roads are crowned, so they they're not completely left they're not completely so the water fresh, off. so the water will run off of them. And so we're traveling on black ice and my Bronco too is slowly but surely sliding off that highway. And um, I looked in my mirror, or excuse me, I looked in my window and realized we're sliding off the highway. And there was a guy named Ken with me at the time. And I said, Kenny, we're going to roll this thing. And of course, he did this to, you know, to brace himself. And um, then I did something I, I'd never done before. And what I did was I... Uh, I grabbed a hold of the bottom of the steering wheel with both my hands and planted my elbows into my hip. And about that time, we hit that grass and we rolled it. And that thing. No airbags. Did you hear that? No, it was an '87, so I don't know. It didn't have airbags. So that was and if it did, it didn't deploy none of them. <laughs> but no, it didn't have airbags. And when we did that. Um, we rolled that thing three times, 
had hit lat, landed on its wheels, it would have been three complete times. But by the time it had rolled the third time, it started to go up on its wheels, but it went up against the fence at the same time mm -hmm. and just fell back down on the side. And uh, so we both climbed out of there. And um, I'm starting to walk away from the Bronco 2, and Kenny's milling around inside the Bronco 2. And I said, Kenny, what are you doing? He said, oh, Benny, he says, I got to have a cigarette. I said, get the hell out of that thing before it blows up. So he climbs out of there, and we walk back to the highway. And... Um, by the time we got to the highway, but from the time of the wreck to the time we got back to the highway, there was a semi truck waiting on us. And, and I just walked up to the truck and opened the door and climbed into the, I didn't ask him or nothing. I figured if he's sitting there, I'm climbing in. Yeah. So I just climbed in and, and he says, uh, he says, where you guys want to go? Well, probably the best closest town. And he said, well, there's one about 11 miles from here. And he had radioed ahead of time, and he took us up to this truck top, and they had an ambulance sitting there waiting on us. And they took us to the hospital, and they Kenny got cut in two places on his arm, and he had to have stitches. And I got, the only thing that was wrong with me is I got bruised down here just above my belt. And, um, anyway, then, um, after we got out of the hospital, there was a cab waiting for us to take us back. Mm -hmm. And they had already set us up a room in a hotel right next to the truck stop. Oh, that's good. And, um, of course, we paid for the cab. We paid for the truck stop. And we gave them our insurance cards at the hospital, naturally. And, um, and the next morning, we got up, went back to the truck stop. And the per person I asked... To give us a ride to St. Louis was heading to Kansas City, and Kenny lived in Kansas City, so so he had a ride all the way to Kansas City, and I he dropped me off up there in St. Louis so I could go to work. And I remember thinking that when, as I'm walking up to this truck, man, something's going on here that can't be explained. So I got to figure out what's going on. So, so that was uh, one of my first tastes of what my God can do for me. Mm -hmm. But you didn't know it at the time. Um, what's that? You didn't know it at the time. You just no, 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 uh, uh, just, no. I just knew something much bigger than me is going on. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so anyway, it started my search. I'd been, I'd always believed in God, but as far as a personal relationship, I didn't have one. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then another little story I've got is, um, after that episode had happened, I got you my, after you know the Bronco? Yeah, my, my, uh, former mother-in-law, she ended up, uh, taking me to church on, in July. Can't particularly tell you what day. And I get there. And uh, I'm watching all of these people at this church. Praise the Lord. And you could tell these people were genuinely doing that. And uh, I just broke down into tears. And uh, my mother, my former mother-in-law, she asked me if I wanted to be prayed for. And I said, sure. And, and prior to that, there, there was this uh, guy who had stood up about three or four rows in front of me and said, there's a man here who desperately wants to quit his drinking and doesn't know how. And I really started for that. <laughs> and uh, bottom line was they prayed for me that day. And, Is that a friend to you or somebody else? Well, he ended up becoming a friend of mine. Oh, um, no, no, the guy that needed to desperately quit drinking. Was no, he referring no, to you? No, he was referring to me. Oh, or right. I'm, I'm assuming he was referring to me. I mean, it was just a word of knowledge that he had gotten. Oh. And um, 
Anyway, he ended up praying for her. him and several others around there ended up praying for me. And um, months later, I ended up in his kinship group at the church. Um, but uh, that was somewhere in July. And then uh, in late December, or I guess, yeah, yeah, in late December, I gave up my drinking and uh, didn't touch the alcohol for five or six more years. And now I like to have a beer now and again, but um, after two, I'm done. <laughs> I just don't care for it after that. Um, another time I was working for a company called uh, Star Suites. And what they did was they built these trailers for movie stars to change on a set. You know, they take them out to wherever they're filming and then the, movies, you know, you can, the actor can change or, or they have these wagons that they call honey wagons and they're big toilets on trailers is what they are. And um, so I built these things. So anyway, they moved, uh, they were, when I was first employed with them, they moved, they were uh, uh, located in Riverside, which wasn't, isn't too far from my house, it's north of the river. And then they moved their, their shop to Lenexa, Kansas. And at the time, I'm driving a, or actually, I guess I didn't have, well, I'm driving a, a three-quarter ton uh, Dodge truck with a utility bed on it. And it had straight six in it. <coughs> and, and this was my, I guess this was the second time I was employed with them. Anyway, bottom line was my truck was losing power considerably. And, um, and, uh, I could, it, I could leave when it was cold, the truck ran pretty good, but as it heated up, it would lose power. And I had enough, it, ha it had enough go to get me to Riverside. Mm -hmm. So I had arranged to have a guy um, pick me up there because he was headed there and, and give me a ride on into to, uh, Lenexa. Well, one, so that worked out really well for him and I both. And one uh, morning, um, there was a policeman sitting there um, right where I turned off of 29 to get on Vivian Road and run down to um, Riverside. And um, so I had to stop. And the thing about it was, is if, as long as I didn't stop that truck, I, it, it had enough power to pull itself to wherever I was going. Well, at this point, I had to stop. And then it didn't have enough power to pull itself off the line at that point. So I ended up pushing the truck off the road and hot-footing it up over the hill from where I was to uh, get to my ride, right? Well, I get over the hill and down and around the curve just inside to see my ride take off without me. Mm. So I'm bummed. <laughs> no cell phones you couldn't call them. Uh, no, I didn't have no such thing as that. Um, I'm just bummed. And um, so I turn around and start walking back to my truck. Well, it was dark at the time, and by the time I'm starting to walk back, it's starting to turn daylight. And me and the man upstairs are having a discussion about, hey, listen, man, I did everything I could possibly do to get to where I needed to be so I could get my ride. Why do you let this happen to me? And about that time, I spot this envelope at, on the ground and it was weathered and had been sitting there for quite some time. And the day before that, I had seen a person walking right by there. So they could have picked up this envelope also. But anyway, I'm walking up to this envelope, and this envelope's just screaming out for me to pick it up. And I pick it up, 
and there's three hundred and eighty dollars in it, which incidentally turned out to be just what I needed to put an engine and a transmission into the truck. <laughs> wow! <laughs> so, uh, do I have a God who cares? You betcha I do. Do I have a God who knows your pain? Yeah, I think so. Um, do I have a a God who wants to give you the best? It's been a wild old ride since I got saved. Some of the things that's happened to me, the only way I can explain them is my God has blessed me much. Yeah, that's really good. So, well, thank you, Vince. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's been good. I uh, wanted you to, to tell the story I heard once about you surfing on a motorcycle. Can, <laughs> can you tell me that story? Yeah. So I get employed by the Nazarene Publishing House. <laughs> and I have this motorcycle I ride to work. And I rode it to work that day. Um, so this happens... In sept- let's see, I get employed in September. I guess this happened the following July, June, July, somewhere like that. It was a uh, motorcycle weather, of course. That's not to say I don't ride them in the wintertime, but uh, anyway, bottom line was um, I followed this uh, utility, one ton utility uh, bed truck out of Kansas City, never got past him. I mean, it was wall-to-wall cars. This was back before we had the new bridge across the, when we had the old Paseo Bridge across there. And um, so anyway, I followed them all the way back to Liberty and um, never got past him. Uh, We're in the passing lane and uh, we get to Pleasant Valley and um, he all of a sudden locks up his brakes. Or kind of is coming to, I guess he's coming to, he's having to slow down at a high rate of speed. Well, I didn't quite get slowed down as fast as he did. And, um, and I wasn't as versed in riding a motorcycle as I am now. I'm a little bit better about it. And anyway, bottom line was, um, I was putting rather heavy pressure on my rear tire trying to get this thing stopped, and it wasn't stopping. And and I realized I'm going to hit this truck. Mm -hmm. And so the last thing that I remember that I did was I leaned my bike to the right to miss him on the right hand side. Well, there's a lady who was seeing, was watching what was going on and she backed off. She was, she was in the same lane beside me and she backed off to let me in. But of course I wasn't paying attention to what she was doing. And um, anyway, bottom line was, now everything I tell you now is what was told to me or I've seen evidence thereof Mm -hmm. to my motorcycle. And what she said, or or what this other lady said, she said, um, what happened was, um, she said, I leaned my bike um, to the right, and I I caught it with my highway bar on the left-hand side, um, caught the bumper. And she said, I, she said, I hit that truck. And she said, and I stood up on top of the bike. And, and what, I don't. What part of you hit the truck? The, the highway bar oh, of the oh, bike. Anyway. On the left hand side? Yeah, it ended up giving me that scar. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. So, so she says, she says that bike, she says the bike hit the truck. And she said, and I stood up on top of the bike. And I, that has to be right because because the, the clutch handle got drugged to the top of 
the handlebars and you could not move it when I got the bike back to my house. And, um, and not only that, I ended up with a dent in the tank, but the tank never got scratched up. It just had a dent in it. Um, so anyway, bottom line, she says, I stood up on the bike and then she says, I took it. She says, it's like I was dying. Uh, just dove off the bike and, and my helmet hit the, hit the ground. Mm -hmm. And it put a scrape mark about the size of my fist like that in the side of the helmet. And then it goes all the way around to here and ends up being about the size of a silver dollar of a scrape mark, which tells me that my feet were above my head. Mm -hmm. While well, you were sliding. While well, I was gliding on my helmet. <laughs> uh, good, good Lord picks the hardest thing for the old dirt bag to hit, <laughs> so it doesn't, so it doesn't uh, hurt me too much. But uh, anyway, anyway, um, I ended up laying out in the middle of the highway in rush hour traffic. This lady had enough time to get stopped before she got to me. There was a semi truck behind her, and he jackknifed across both lanes and shut down everything. So he was coming to a stop in his trailer. Well, just like your your yeah your other story, and he <laughs> the whole highway was stopped, and you yeah. were in the middle of the highway, and I'm in the middle of the uh -huh. bike and everything in the middle of it. Um, her and this other lady got out, seeing that there was a fish on the, my fender, prayed for me. Mm -hmm. So this lady calls me. She says, she says, I want to thank you, thank me for what? She says, thank you for sealing my faith. Um, okay, you're welcome. <laughs> um, how that happened? And you're in the hospital or something? No, well, I went to the hospital, but uh, they let me out that uh, evening. Oh, that just late. a couple stitches? Yeah, well, yeah. Basically. Yeah, they didn't do a very good job stitching it up, but that doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, anyway, I basically, I just walked out of the hospital with a concussion that lasted for about two and a half, four years. Mm -hmm. But um, she said, "You sealed her face." Anyway, she says, she says that she was praying for me. She said, "I had my hands on you, and I was praying for you." And I said, "Well, I want to thank you for that." And she said, "Well, you don't understand." She says, "I was yelling it." <laughs> she says, "And just as I get done praying for you, she says, you start getting up." <laughs> 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 and we told you to stay down it, everything will be okay and she says you wouldn't have nothing to do with that she says you got up walked to the side of the highway and collapsed again <laughs> and um, and that had to be right because the next thing I know is I'm being gurneyed across the highway and I um, and, and I I open up my eyes and my motorcycle is laying right in the middle of the highway and I've got a bad force. I mean, the first thing through my head was, I can fix that. But then the motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> That's a mechanic for you, right? Yeah. That was my first thought. I can fix I can that. Fix <laughs> and then I passed out again and then I woke back up in the uh, ambulance and I passed out again and then I woke back up in the hospital mm -hmm. and my wife she was in the traffic jam of course mm -hmm. and by the time she gets to it there's nothing you know there's no evidence she knew that there was a wreck but there's no evidence of what wrecked or mm -hmm. anything and when she gets home she has a message on the answering machine from the Liberty Hospital and then she knew <laughs> so, and because of that, now I have a motorcycle license. Yeah. yeah prior to that, I've never had one. Oh. I've been riding motorcycles for years. Oh, I've okay. Had. But she told me that if I, if I ever got back on that motorcycle without a license and insurance, she was calling the police. So. Okay. Hence the license and the insurance. So. Oh, that's a smart thing. So, uh, well, thank you for sharing that story. I think that one is also a really good one for people to hear and and uh, just to, to encourage their faith too. You know, 
Yeah, well, I don't recommend rolling the vehicle or diving off a motorcycle. But uh, but you told me one time other before that you when you were sharing the story that you were surfing on on the skate on the on the motorcycle as it was going across, and then you must have jumped off or something. So well, I talked <laughs> I talked to another guy, and uh, this lady I run across the. the, the I run across the lady who was in the car who tried to let me in. Okay. I run across her at, um, at the fall festival of Liberty mm. and she walks up to me and she says, she says, um, she says, do you ride a motorcycle? And I said, yes. She said, did you have a wreck near Pleasant Valley on the highway during rush hour? I said, yes. She says, I'm the one who was behind you. Hmm. And, and, and she's telling me this and she's about ready to cry. <laughs> and um, hmm. so we talked a little bit and um, she says, she says, apparently you know how to ride. And I happened to tell that to another person and he says, well, you just out really setting your ass <laughs> what you're doing. <laughs> and be honest, that's exactly what I was doing. Find I know how to ride, mm -hmm. so I've gotten better at it, or I hope I have anyway. Yeah. But um, no, by the grace of God, there I walk. Um, I mean, to hit the pavement at 15, 12, 15, 20 miles an hour max, head first, and walk away without breaking a bone in your body. That, my friend, is a miracle. Only oh, by the grace of God that I can. Well, thank you, Vince. It was really good. Thank you for coming in. Yeah, glad to do it. Yeah. All right, thank you. Take care, brother.